Okay, so just to let everyone know, we are recording this meetup, and it will probably be online. If not today, then it'll, it'll meet. Up. It'll be tomorrow. So this is talking about our validated shuttle build. So validated build, uh, validated anything is is basically uh, something that it's been done before. So this validated shuttle build is I built a shuttle computer. I've been building computers for a long, long time. And shuttles in particular, I like because um, they're compact, uh, they're fairly inexpensive, you can, they're portable, they're powerful enough. Uh, but also, if you're just getting into building computers, then they're pretty easy to build because the motherboard's already in there. We'll, we'll talk about you know, how easy it is. But it's, it's kind of, when you buy a shuttle bare bone system, you're 50% of the way there. Because uh, I know a lot of people, they've burned out motherboards because they didn't know how to like put the motherboard in and the cabling and all that stuff. So um, it's something that you can take. You could take this hackpad right now. It has all of the list of the parts, and it's going to walk you through building the computer. Everything from adding the memory to the CPU to the gotchas, like if you put in the video card, you may have to do some uh, deconstruction on the case because the video card may be a little bit too tall. And this is to help you take a lot of the guesswork out of, out of building a computer. Now the idea for this comes from, there are Cisco validated designs, and these are gold. Now, those of you who don't know what a Cisco validated design is or reference architecture or anything like that, um, if you just Google for Cisco Validated Design, or CVD, and you kind of look, we have, Cisco, we have validated designs for wireless, for security, for campus networking, uh, WAN, uh, like for, for every single uh, architect out there. So I'll just show you uh, wireless Cisco Validated Design. and I think it's that one. So these are very, very large documents where they walk you through building a network. You know, what settings, uh, you know, how, you know, if it's for wireless, how far do you place things apart? Uh, best practices for channel uh, utilization, 2.4 gigahertz versus five gigahertz, what antennas to use. So these design documents, these validated designs, people have gone through the trouble of, of installing this hit all the roadblocks and you could follow this template. It's a, basically a template if you're building a network from scratch. So these are great, great guides. Uh, a lot of people don't know about them, but these are, these are things when you're trying to go from like a, uh, I don't want to say like a chump change network engineer into a network engineer who makes more than 80,000, 100K, you, you want to kind of break through that 70K, 75K ish barrier. Uh, this is generally the thinking or the, the training involved, right? So before 75K, people are just telling you what to do, right? Just, okay, go to that router, type in this command, right? Very, very specific. Once you start getting into the big money, this is where people are gonna say, hey, design that office. And there may not be very much direction on that, right? Maybe a couple caveats like have dual internet, you know, uh, keep it under this power or whatever, right? So it's going to become a, a lot less specific. So these are where these design guides can come into play. And I guess it's not going to come up, but <laughs> trust me, it's cool. All right. And also, uh, incidentally enough, um, when companies do their pay grades, uh, the higher the pay, and I'll, I'll use Cisco ex as an example. Um, you have different pay grades for, for jobs. And the lower pay grades, it, it will say um, very specific, uh, the person uh, is giving specific instructions, right? So they're told, okay, configure that router, uh, type in, the, you know, here's a template, do this. As the pay gets higher, uh, it, it says something like uh, ability to deal with vague situations, 
uh, ability to come up with solutions on their own and stuff like that. So uh, that's where the validated designs can help you in expanding your thinking. Okay, the validated shuttle build. Right? So we do, we're just gonna kind of run through this a little bit. Very simple to build. It costs around $1,000 for a tricked out 32 gig Core i7 Skylake uh, badass machine. This will run all of the stuff you need for your CCIE routing and switching lab and will help you with VMware and stuff like that. Um, you'll be able to take it anywhere. You'll be able to edit video. You can do anything on this machine that you could do with a larger machine. Right? Uh, I use this shuttle to, right now it's folding, running folding at home. It's uh, trying to fight cancer right now. Uh, I've taken this to Bangkok, video editing, insane 4K video editing, not a problem at all. Okay. Part of this build is the videos along with the list of materials. So for each step, there are videos. And here you'll see the build of materials, the chassis, the power supply. The power supply and the motherboard are already built in. So when you buy the shuttle machine, uh, you're almost like 75% of the way there, you just pop in the CPU, the, the memory, your hard drives, and if you want your video card and stuff. Okay. So this is prices as of yesterday. You can see it's around uh, 1,050 bucks. So it, it's gone up a little bit in price. Now the Core i7 and the chassis are the most expensive parts, both at $329 through Newegg right now. Uh, the memory is also fairly expensive. The memory, the DDR4 memory has gone down quite a bit in price. So now you can get 64 gigs, four sticks uh, for, you know, before it was like 400 bucks, like almost $100 per stick, but now it's gone down significantly. The SSD drive is, uh, for some reason, the Samsung SSD drives are rising in price. I think it's because of demand. These are really, really good SSD drives. Uh, but, you know, they kind of are in the channel. They'll go up and down around 25 to 50 bucks. Right? So that's the bill of materials. And then I always suggest getting uh, some USB 3 flash sticks, some USB drives uh, when you want to install like Linux or VMware or other things. Uh, you can put the install the ISO, burn it to the, the stick, and it's a lot faster these days. Um, the days of installing through a DVD or a CD-ROM, I don't... I can't tell you how long ago I've had to use the CD-ROM or DVD drive. I don't buy any computers anymore with uh, CD or DVD-ROM drives. It's just, it doesn't make sense to me when you can just have everything on a stick. Right? And then I have all the Newegg links here. These are not affiliate links. These are just plain links. And what that means is um, I don't get any money from clicking those links. So um, that's for impartiality and uh, transparency re reasons. So questions so far about the purpose of the validated shuttle build and the basic bill of materials here. Questions so far? Wow, no questions. How many of you have built, well, let's do it this way. How many of you have never built a computer before? You have never built a computer. So we've got the chat window. Just type in there. You've you've never built a computer before. Wow! So everyone in this room has built a computer. I find that hard to believe, but okay, we'll go with it. Okay. So if you're shy and you've never built a computer, but you don't want to say in chat that, that you have it, um, I'll give you some advice. It is very, very, very helpful to build your own computer. You're going to learn a lot of things along the way. Uh, it's going to make you a better engineer. It's going to get you used to hands-on stuff. And uh, you'll, you'll find out that it's easier than you think. Right? So, and you can bring it up in your interview. Uh, it's, um, you know, if you're applying for lower level or entry level jobs, telling people that you've built your own computer is, is definitely a plus. 
right? Versus someone who's just gone to school, they've read books, but they haven't had any hands-on. Um, that may give you the the advantage that is required to get that job. Okay, continuing on, uh, we've got a couple views of the shuttle. You can see that's the front, lots of ports here. Uh, there is a, a slot for a CD-ROM DVD drive if you so wish, uh, but F that, you don't need it anymore. Uh, the back view right here, now we've got the power uses a regular power cable. It's got two slots here for, uh, you know, for like graphics card or extra network card. It's got a built-in gig uh, ethernet port, got some audio stuff that I never use because I do everything through USB. A whole mess of USB slots, uh, full-size HDMI, and double display port right there. Right? Now, the processor that I recommend is the i7-6700K. This is a really awesome processor. It overclocks, or not, over, but it turbos up to 4.2. Uh, you're, you're not going to do that much overclocking in this one, but uh, if you get another motherboard, you could probably overclock that to like maybe 4.4. Doesn't use that much power, it uses 91 watts, uh, which if you compare it to previous generations of like 120 and 140 watts, it's definitely, a, uh, definitely better. And that processor works completely fine with VMware. Uh, virtual box. It has the VMware pass, uh, was it that VXI or whatever you call it, that VM pass through. So your hardware can pass through to ESXi into your, your VM. So that's pretty cool. And then I included some, some links there to the Tom's hardware review and the Nantech review. Uh, if you Google for the Core i7 6700K, you'll find that it is probably the highest rated processor ever for Intel because it's it's speedy, it's powerful, and it uses less power, which is which is awesome. Uh, the memory I recommend here is the G Skill uh, DDR4 uh, 2133 RAM, just regular speed DDR4 RAM. You don't have to go the crazy super speed RAM. Uh, having 64 gigs will be will give you more than enough RAM for whatever you want to do. You could have crazy crazy topologies. Uh, yes, it has a built-in NIC. It's on the back right here. Gigabit NIC right there. Okay. Now, as far as uh, storage, I recommend SSD drive. Get the M.2 format. M.2 format, it just plugs right into the motherboard right there. It takes you five seconds to install it. Okay, maybe 10 seconds. It just goes into the slot, and then this uh, screw, you just screw it down. Really awesome technology. Uh, you, you shouldn't need to buy the full 2.5-inch uh, hard drives anymore. Uh, let's see if I have a picture of that here somewhere. Uh, maybe, yeah, these guys right here. So uh, these are cool. These are still pretty awesome, but for this shuttle build, it, you don't really need to do that. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, it's got one M.2 slot. So um, yeah, if you, if you want to have affordable but uh, decent capacity, the M.2 Samsung 500 gig SSD is is pretty good. Uh, you can get the the like the 950s right now, the Samsung 950s, which are really crazy fast, but they come at a premium, little pressure. Talk about all the pros and cons with that. So you can see for each. For each component, I give you a couple paragraphs to several paragraphs. I give you review links and stuff like that. So you just follow everything there. Uh, so we have a question, what type of SSD cards can be used today instead of hard drives? Uh, well, this M.2 is considered an SSD drive. Now SSD drive, solid state drive, when you is kind of redundant, but a lot of people say that anyways. Uh, but this M.2 is an SSD. If you plug this in, you don't need any hard drives. This is your quote unquote hard drive. You, you don't need to have any spinning rust anymore on your in your computer. But if you don't want to plug in an M.2 for whatever wacky reason, it would be kind of dumb in this in this case. You can see there are SATA ports, SATA 3 ports that you could uh, plug in a, 
Uh, if you want, you can plug in a traditional hard drive, uh, or more commonly these days, you're going to plug in a uh, 2.5 inch SSD. I, I haven't I haven't had a regular hard drive in my computer for five years at least. Uh, I do have regular hard drives in a Synology box in sand storage that's uh, about 10 feet behind me, but that's for capacity. Okay, uh, the flash stick, get a USB 3 flash stick uh, because when you're installing your operating system, you want that to be as fast as possible. And a 16 gig, uh, a data one, this is like a pretty speedy one, uh, is, is pretty awesome. Now, we have some optional items. You don't have to get these, but these will make your life a lot better. I've got a couple videos, I've got the uh, price list and stuff like that. But um, a couple things you may want to think about. Pretty mandatory if you're going to get a graphics card. So if you're going to install uh, a graphics card, that graphics card is probably going to take 100 to 250 watts of power, right? So your shuttle, uh, depending on what model shuttle you buy, comes with a 300 watt power supply. Now, if you do the math, right, if your processor is using 91 watts on full blast and your, your card may go up to 250 watts, you can see that a 300 watt power supply is not gonna be enough. You're gonna hit the ceiling on that one. So, Shuttle sells a 500 watt power supply that goes in. You're going to have to take the, the current one out and put the new one in. And I have instructions for that. I have a I have an actual video about doing that. Uh, so that's that's the first thing I recommend for the shuttle. Uh, it's kind of halfway between the optional and mandatory. Uh, now, if you're not going to put a graphics card in there, forget about it. The built-in power supply is fine. Um, now, I have heard, and I actually will go along with it, the 500 watt power supply actually turns out to be a little bit quieter than the 300 watt. So, uh, the, the shuttle can tend to be a little loud, so some people will upgrade the power supply just on the, the, the sound alone. Uh, also, upgrading the fan. So, the shuttle has a fan in the back. It uses a, a little different uh, heat pipe system to carry the heat away from the CPU. But there's a fan in the back that you can replace. The stock fan is a little noisy. So I replace it with a Noctua fan. The Noctua fan is a really, really quiet fan. So it's, it's pretty awesome. Carrying strap, and then I have a link to the mini video card that I know fits inside the shuttle. It's in the shuttle right now. So we'll talk about the, the power supply, we'll talk about some of the optional stuff, and then we'll stop for questions. This, this uh, 500 watt power supply, it took me about 15 minutes to install. I was being careful. Uh, if you do it fast, you could probably get this, ten, uh, this time down to about five minutes. Um, and I've, I've got the video for that. The fan, uh, you could, you know, if you practice a lot on the fan installation, you could probably do the fan in like two to three minutes flat if you wanted to. Uh, the Noctua fan comes with, uh, I mean, it's, it's comes with like uh, vibration dampeners, all this weird stuff too. Uh, it also comes with the extra cable that when you put the cable and you connect it, it's like um, it goes between the power and the motherboard, kind of like an extension, but it down ramps the RPM, so uh, it makes it even more quiet. Uh, some people don't bother with it. Uh, I put it in, and it, it does make a a difference. And of course, I have videos on how to install the fan. Pretty easy stuff. See, we make it we make it simple for you. Uh, the strap. Uh, this is if you travel a lot. Uh, this is <laughs> it's basically a strap. puts a carrying handle on top of the shuttle, and then you can walk around. And uh, this we have validated that this shuttle fits perfectly under an airline seat. So this is. Uh, hand carryable can carryable onto an airline uh, domestic and international and the only problem you will have is uh, every security checkpoint I have gone into have has stopped me because apparently they've never seen a computer this small uh, so uh, so yes 
they just don't know what the hell this thing is, uh, especially if you're carrying it uh, with the ports facing front. It gets pretty interesting. Uh, but I've had situations where a younger TSA guy has, has been like a land gamer and he knows what it is and he's explained what this what the shuttle is to other people. So um, but you will get uh, you will get stopped at security uh, almost every, every time if you carry this. But, you know, such is life. Okay, and that strap is is pretty cheap. Okay, talking about the video card, the ASUS GTX 970 Mini video card. It's a it's a GTX 97 970, which is a pretty decent card. It's not top of the top of the line, but it's it's up there, and uh, you can see the number of ports on the back. So if you want to do any type of triple monitor setup, uh, this shuttle is very capable of it as far as CPU, but you're going to need to put a decent video card in there. So this is the one we know works. Now, the installation is pretty interesting. I run, I run you through uh, all the steps with all the pictures. Uh, if you've never installed a external, a discrete video card before, it can be interesting because there's extra power connectors that you have to worry about. Um, I have seen people, so most video cards these days come with a, a pin guard, and you're supposed to take this off, right? Uh, I've gotten emails saying, you know, I'm trying to follow your guide, and I can't get the video card in there. It's because they didn't take this damn thing off. So they're trying to shove it into the, the motherboard with the, with the stuff on. Uh, so that's been interesting. So lots of stuff. And I will stop here to look at the questions here. Uh, did you get the video card for yours? And why would you get it? OK, so there is a discrete video card in mine. Why would you get it if not for games or video editing? Folding at home, uh, video editing. If I weren't doing any of that, then I probably wouldn't need a video card. Oh, for triple monitor. If you're going to do triple monitor, um, yeah, you're going to need that video card. So yeah, also any 4K resolutions, um, you're going to need that video card. OK, if you aren't using physical disk anymore, what are you using as a backup solution? Synology. I've got five four terabyte drives in RAID 5 and also cloud. Uh, what monitors are you using when you travel? Uh, I use a USB 3 monitor. It's, um, where is it? no, it's somewhere. Uh, it's, a, it's a Asus 1080p USB 3 monitor, powered completely by USB 3, fits my backpack. Or you get a hotel that has a TV. And almost every TV out there these days that's within the last five years has a HDMI input. So carry around an HDMI cord and you're set. Is the shuttle scanned at the airport? Yes. OK, any qu other questions? I'll stop for about 30 seconds. It works perfectly fine with ESXi. The card is compatible. Multiple people have installed ESXi. So not only I have built this machine, uh, there have been several others have built this machine. There's been a couple guys at CDW who are using this exact build right now for, they call them kill boxes. Kill boxes uh, when you do like demos of ice and firepower, and like demos of whatever, right? So you bring this to a customer. And so instead of carrying around a UCS server, you carry around this running VMware. So ESXi, no problem on this one. Uh, are they using a USB stick to scan the shuttle? Are they using a USB stick to scan the shuttle? Not sure how to answer that question. Okay, so uh, Greg on that one. Um, maybe rephrase it and we'll get back to it. Okay, for the system build, you can see that I gave you steps, ground yourself, remove cover, blah, 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 the exact steps on how to do this, right? Just in case you've never built a computer before, right? Uh, now, there, there's some things that um, 
I needed to flush in. So it's kind of a lie that this is 100% built, but I think it's about 80% there. I just have to flush it out a little bit. Okay, so the, the back cover is held in by thumb screws. You don't need a screwdriver, although it does help. Re really easy to remove. Uh, one thing is, um, uh, I don't know if there any of you have built previous shuttle computers, uh, but the, the sheet metal for the cover has been getting progressively thinner with each shuttle generation. So, um, you know, the previous, the first generation, the sheet metal is pretty thick. Uh, these days it's getting like pretty damn thin. So maybe to save costs or whatever. Oh, also what you see back here is uh, you see that I've put in the IP address uh, as a sticker. Now, the reason I do this is a lot of times I run my computers headless. So when I transport, uh, I run them headless and then I, I VNC into it. Uh, I remote control RDP into it. So I need to know the IP address. And you know, this makes it easy for me to remember. Uh, oh, also uh, what I did to free up some space inside, there's a cable. And I think I have the picture earlier somewhere. Uh, maybe, if not, I'll put it in there. But there's a cable from the back of the, the shuttle to the front, and it's for the front USB 3 ports. And I disconnected that and basically threw it away because uh, I don't intend to use any of the front USB ports, and I want to save myself the, the extra crap that's kind of flying around in the computer. So uh, if you're going to do that, which I, I recommend, uh, Remember to put a sticker in the front saying no front USB or else you're going to forget one day and you're going to look like an idiot. Okay, I need to run through the BIOS and take pictures of that, but that's easy. Uh, here are pictures of the inside of the trays. This is where your hard drive, your regular hard drive or uh, CD-ROM drive will go, but none of you are going to do that because you're smart. Uh, that Oh, here it is. This is the cable that I'm talking about. This is the USB 3 cable to the front. So I, I disconnected that and basically threw it away. Don't need it. And this is the view of the, the fan that I've, uh, this is the replacement fan, the Noctua fan. Right? And close-ups of the power connectors and close-ups of the, of the back after you put in the, oh, this is this part right here is when you're putting in that video card, uh, this extra dealio gets into the way. So you just take a bunch of pliers and just rip it out. Okay, I'm going to stop here for about 30 seconds while I answer some questions. Let's see, is the scan at the airport a physical scan of the entire, or a data scan? It's just a, it's an x-ray. Why, why would they data scan? They data, it's just, they run it through an x-ray. Uh, comes with thumb screws. The thumb screws are, are part of this. Can the physical disk tray be removed? Yes. That's what I've done. I've moved the disk tray. So this tray right here, just take it out. Uh, some people prefer to leave it in because it provides some cross bracing. So if you if you leave it in, they have it screwed in. It provides um, uh, lateral stability to prevent flex, but eh, not a big deal. You could you could safely remove it. Okay, and here you can see the clearances. Uh, if you if you uh, do decide to do this, you'll see that you can't you can't have the tray. You have to take out the tray. You must take out the tray if you use the video card. If you put in the video card, because there's not enough space, it will block the power connector, and there's just no way to do it. I guess you could Dremel your way out of it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so. If you decide to go that route and you also want to put in the old school SSDs, then uh, the way I found to do it is uh, you mount it on top of the fan right here and just use some duct tape to attach it if you decide to go that route. Yes, it's ghetto, but it works. As far as cable management, uh, you can get the, the shuttle actually comes with a couple of these uh, Velcro tie things. So you could tie things up after you have everything hunky-dory. Make sure your damn shuttle works before you do this, because uh, it, it's it's annoying if your shuttle doesn't work and you have everything zip-tied up. 
Uh, or you could use the zip ties. Either way is, is fine. Now, as far as power consumption, I've, I've benchmarked all of this out, and I have hard numbers for you. Uh, so if you don't put a GPU in there, uh, this is all validated with the P3 kilowatt. Uh, if you've never used the kilowatt before, the kilowatt is a excellent, excellent thing to have. Amazon. It's cheap. It's like super cheap. Okay, this is one of the models here. So what the kilowatt is, is you, you plug this into a wall, then you plug your whatever your crap is into there, and you hit a couple buttons, and it will tell you how much wattage uh, that that device is using. It's pretty damn accurate. So it tells you if, you know, and you don't have to use it just with the computers. You can use it with refrigerators, uh, air conditioning units, and it's pretty enlightening to to find out how much juice your stuff uses. Uh, but the hard numbers here, um, you're upon booting up 10 to 20 watts, so it's like almost nothing. Uh, if you're booted up into Windows 10, 10 to 40 watts, so almost almost nothing. Uh, GNS3 with 30 routers or viral with 30 routers, then you're looking at 40 to 80 watts. So uh, 80 watts, you're almost hitting that 91 watts of the of the CPUs. So you're almost maxing things out. Now the story changes when you put in the graphics card. When you put in the graphics card, uh, your your power usage during Windows is going to double. It's probably going to be around 50 watts. Once you start editing video, you're going to have spikes up to 150. And the uh, big kahuna is if you are using folding at home, which just maxes out everything. Uh, this is probably going to be the maximum usage or wattage you'll ever see on that shuttle is 230 watts. 230 watts is probably the, the theoretical, um, the witnessed maximum that I've ever seen this shuttle running. And it can sustain this 230 watts for, for a long time. Uh, the shuttle is behind me, and it's been running folding at home. Uh, CPU is at 100%, C, uh, GPU is at 100%. It's been doing this for uh, seven days straight, and I'll show you the statistics later, but uh, no problem. It still runs just fine. Okay, questions. Questions so far? Let's see. Let's take a look at the chat here. Yeah, it looks like we're doing pretty good. Does that support VMware Direct Path? Uh, I would guess so. I mean, other people. I run ESXi on it just fine. Other people run ESXi, so. So it, so if you're Intel Arc Core i7, I have a link in there. 67, okay. You can look up the associated Intel uh, specs on that, but it supports all the VM, VXi, VTX, all that crap. Okay, continuing on. Uh, I need to flesh out the drivers and stuff, but uh, I'll run through like all the customization and tuning. Uh, one thing to keep in mind that uh, after you do your initial stuff is installing your initial applications, ninite.com. Uh, if you're in the IT business and installing computers, laptops and stuff like that, if you don't know Ninite, you're a damn fool because this thing will save you so much time, it's ridiculous. Uh, basically, you go into Ninite, you click a bunch of boxes for all your browsers and your essential programs. Uh, I've got like 15 that I click, VLC, you know, 7-zip, all this stuff. Get installer, you install, and you walk away. Make a sandwich. Uh, and in about 10 to 15 minutes, everything's done. It answers all the dialog boxes. It clicks next. Uh, it just does everything for you. Rather than just sitting there manually downloading everything like a Neanderthal, um, do it through Ninite. It's free, and it's just the smart way to do it. Uh, it's, yeah, I can't say too much good things about it. Uh, folding at home, uh, if you want to help in the fight against cancer, uh, folding at home simulates uh, proteins and uses both your CPU and GPU to help uh, do the calculations and fold. 
you earn points depending on how complicated the stuff is. It uses your CPU cycle, so you don't need to do anything, you just fire it up. Uh, now, because it's using 100% of everything, uh, you really can't play games while you're doing this. You're not going to edit. Uh, hold on. You're not going to be able to edit any video. Uh, it's going to be excruciatingly painful if you're if you're folding and editing video at the same time. Uh, so this is something you would do when you go to sleep. You fire up folding at home, let it crunch numbers, and then maybe when you wake up, turn it off. Right. So you can see the numbers here. I'm folding as an individual, not 5150. Uh, uh, this is old as a couple days old now. I've crossed the 2 million points mark. Uh, this is in the top 2% of the world. Uh, this shuttle with the GPU, this lowly thing running for the past two weeks has hit the top 2%. So this shows you how stable this thing is and how, um, how powerful in terms of processing power uh, this is. I'll fill in the, the VMware stuff along with the ESXi stuff and, and viral stuff in the future. But uh, all of this has been validated to work. I just need to take screenshots and pop this in. All right. OK, so we're done with the lecture part of this. Questions about the validated shuttle build, the shuttle itself, or the process of making this, this bad boy? So we'll hang out for about uh, five minutes taking questions. Okay, we have questions. How do we get docs on the build? How do we get docs on the build? Oh, well, this is the doc. The, this hackpad is the documentation on the build. Yep, so we have Joe Ortiz. I built this several months ago from the parts list you provided. Very happy with it. So another happy quote unquote customer. <laughs> uh, this is a fun computer to have. And you could you could bring it around, you could play games with it. Editing videos no problem at all. It's fine. Any other questions? So, Greg, I do not understand. Is there a download of the specification? What? So, all the specs, the price list, the steps are here in the hackpad. So I'll paste it. I'll paste it into the. In, there in the chat. This is the document. Any other questions? So the question is, can I get the shuttle for the price you quoted from Newegg? Can I get the shuttle for the price you quoted from Newegg? <laughs> all, the, all of these prices are from Newegg. All these links go to Newegg. So, so yes, you can, you can get this from Newegg. There's a pretty good chance you can get this from Newegg. All right, that's it. Uh, just to remind everyone, this has been recorded, so the the recording should be up as soon as the rendering is done and all that. Expected to be uh, you know, probably, I'll say tomorrow to be safe. So thanks for joining. If you have any other questions, hit me up in Slack, and uh, I'll see you later.